Welcome to the Tactical Dent Tech Podcast. You are now part of a small underground movement of dent technicians from all over the world. We are on a mission, a mission to change our industry with innovation, intelligence, and skill. But because we don't rely on an insurance company to steer customers our way, we need to do things different. We need to do things smarter. We do that through a network of technicians that we call the Tactical Tech Movement. Now let's get this revolution started. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Tactical Dent Tech Podcast. We got a special episode here because we got the man, the myth, the legend, Vince D'Alessandro with co-host Angela Hiley here. I thought you were going to like totally forget to introduce me. I seen you glaring at me through the camera actually. So That's right. That was a reminder, you know. I know. I was like, damn you, John Hiley. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to talk a little bit about, um, you know, about Vince, and we want to hear a little bit of his Chi Town days because um, I think Vince grew up like uh, the people in the uh, the series Shameless. Shameless. <laughs> yes, Shameless. One of my favorite shows on on Showtime. I know. I love. I it. don't miss an episode. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I kind of did. I, I grew up on the northwest side of Chicago, though, not the south side, which. Uh, you know, it's it's more where where I grew up, it was all cops and firemen and city employees, because in Chicago, if you work for the city of Chicago, you have to live within city limits. Right. Yeah. That's Maybe the way it is in same. Dayton as well. Yeah. Not here out in L.A. You could live where, wherever the hell you want to live. But in Chicago, you had to live in city limits, you know, spend your money that you made off the city in the city. Right. Kind of makes sense. But, yeah, I grew up with a bunch of dipshit kids that were that got away with murder because their dads were cops you know what i mean mm -hmm. right 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 it's funny because i've been in them neighborhoods up here in dayton and uh it's kind of crazy like it's right in the middle of kind of like what you would think would be a bad area but then it's just a bunch of cops and firefighters so the whole area is kind of like protected and but yeah. the interesting thing is you got to go to the schools right oh yeah well you know what? i didn't go to the schools i went to catholic school all my life 12 oh. years of catholic school like if you're Catholic from Chicago, boy. yeah, I'm a Catholic boy. Chicago public school system was crap. It was total crap. So, uh, you know, how did you like confession? I loved it. <laughs> no, I, loved it. I go to confession uh, every night with my wife. <laughs> That's how I sleep so well at night. I confess no, all my sins to her. No, in school. <laughs> I always want to go in there and just say random stuff because we got a Catholic church that's right across the street from my shop, and I yeah. just want to go in there and be like, Pastor. I masturbated today. Oh, it's a priest. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> what priest. am I going to do? <laughs> Say two Hail Marys, one Our Father, and uh, you're absolved of your sins. Go on your day. And I'd be like, again. sir, that just made gave me a hard on. <laughs> oh, Can God. I be forgiven again? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's a good thing about the Catholic Church and growing up Catholic is uh, I, I I knew that uh, God would forgive me for all the crappy shit that I did growing up. Nice. So, ask for forgiveness, or at least that's what was in my mind. And I did some uh, pretty horrendous stuff growing up. Like what? Tell us. Ah, uh, well, have you ever seen the movie Basketball Diaries with uh, DiCaprio? It was like one of his first movies. Mm -mm. I don't think I've seen that. No, I no it was seen based it. on a book. And uh, watch it, because that's basically my life up until I was about 16, 17 years old. But you got so a much, historian. Well, not so much. Well, it, it was Catholic school kids that did fucked up shit in the neighborhood and, and stole and this and that to support their drug habit, mm -hmm. which by the time I was 14, I had a pretty good drug habit. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I'm right with you there on that one. <laughs> right. So, you know. The gateway drug, I well, just to back it up a little bit, I, I'm, I'm the youngest of four kids. Uh, my mom's from Ireland, dad's from Italy, so we had a really hard, strong work ethic. Watched our dad. My dad was a union carpenter all his life and whatnot, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and she kept us all as straight as she could. Mm -hmm. But my dad was like 45 years old when he had me, right? So by the time I was a teenager, he wasn't chasing after me. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was, he was done raising kids. So I was kind of left to my own devices. And what do you do? You hang out in the neighborhood. You got the friends. And, 
you know, my good Irish mom was like, oh, it's not my son. It's always the other kids, so, kids that are the bad influences. Right. Yeah. But kind of all along, it was kind of me that was the bad influence. You know, for, <laughs> I, I just didn't get it caught. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I grew up a, 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 a skater punk rocker that uh, was not fashionable in the 80s at all, especially in Chicago, anywhere in the Midwest, you know, late 80s. You know, if you were a punk rocker, you got beat up by the, the jocks. You know, they would take your skateboard and crack it over your head and do stupid stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so I would dye my hair all sorts of colors. I had mohawks and all this other stuff. You know, it's it's kind of funny talking about this because it seems mm-hmm. like 10 lifetimes ago, you know. You know what I say to that, don't you? Stay exactly. gold. Pony boy. Stay gold. Yeah. You know what? Pony that was my, actually my nick, nickname when I was a kid was Pony Boy because I, I would dye my hair blonde. <laughs> no. Uh. And yeah. you still had dark eyebrows? Yes. I bet like that was boy. very interesting to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's so yeah. funny. It's like uh, it's like I grew up in a mini version of where you grow, grew up because that's really like all we had to do as kids. I mean, it seemed like all we wanted to do is find alcohol. Uh-huh. And ironically, we always had weed because it was much easier. Uh, here, here's here's how great the war on drugs works. It's much okay. easier, like for a kid to score weed or drugs than it is alcohol. Oh sure, and yeah. uh, that's because they're a drug dealer. I mean, they don't care who they sell it to, right? Exactly. But to actually, no like, I knew drug dealers that I would go, "Hey man, can you go buy us some alcohol after you sell us this bag of weed?" And they'd be like, "No, <laughs> that's illegal." <laughs> yeah, I'd be like. <laughs> Damn. Not that. <laughs> right. You know? So and they probably knew you were safer on the weed anyway than the alcohol, oh, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It happened in on their terms, not in the liquor store, what with a bunch of kids standing out. We called it pegging for beer. You know, we would stand out there, hey man, can you get us a six pack or a, a couple bottle of Boone's Farm? You know, and they go in and get it for you and take your money. Sometimes they fuck off and you know, keep your shit or, or something. You know, that would happen. Yeah. Well, you know what you got to score, dude? I found out later on. You got to score a broke alcoholic. <laughs> yes. Because you can pick them, you know, you go over to their house, be like, hey, man, four pack of old Milwaukee, you buy us all beer for all night long, and I'll pay for your four pack of old Milwaukee. And the next thing you know, we're at the store. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd, have them, I'd have them calling me. He'd be calling me like, hey, you coming over today? I really need a four pack. <laughs> tall boys, extra tall, you know? Extra tall. Yeah, you know what? I don't think we had tall boys. We had 40s back in the 80s. We didn't really have tall boys. Oh, yes. Yeah, I used to drink some 40s too. You remember uh, St. Ides or Old English? Old English? Yeah, that would get you pretty messed up pretty quick. That's some easy yeah. E type stuff, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember that old good. English 800? That's my eight brand. Ball, I'll take it in ball. a 40 bottle quart or can. <laughs> <laughs> we had Schlitz malt liquor too in a 40. Mm, I like malt liquor. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mickey's Big Mouth. Yes. Oh, I love Mickey. used to drink Mickey's. Right? Yes. Love, 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 love them. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I never, I didn't grow up ditching school and stuff like that, but we would party after school. And, you know, some of my earliest memories of, of drinking and doing bad shit was probably when my parents, I think I was in fifth grade, and uh, like I said, I was I'm the youngest of four, and uh, they they left all four of us for two weeks while they went to my uncle's wedding in Ireland. Wow! Right? Score. <laughs> yeah. So me being in fifth grade, it's like you know I wasn't a threat, so they thought. But uh, you know my older brother and sister. I think my my sister was maybe a freshman or sophomore in high school. My brother's a year or two younger. And they partied every weekend or every night. There was a party at the D'Alessandro's house, you know, and, you know, Midwestern houses, we have basements. So you don't really, you know, bother the neighbors because no one hears you because you're below ground. Right. Yeah. Besides all the kids coming in and out. And, uh, you know, I remember, you know, being in the back in the alley and they're smoking weed and like, here, Vince, here, try some. Because I was a maniac. I was running around the place throwing records at them and, you know, <laughs> chasing them with, around with steak knives and stuff. They, they needed to do something about Vince, you know, and his crazy action. They needed to calm you down a little bit. They needed to calm me down. Here's so next son, thing you know, Vince from... went from being a punk rocker to a Rastafarian. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Rasta man. That's the only thing that calmed me down was that Rastafarian music, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did have my Rasta days, but I, I like ska more than than uh, the Rasta. Uh, okay. It had that mix of Rasta and 
you know, punk rock. Mm. It was a band called The Specials back in the day. Little Halle Selassie I. Fishbone, you remember Fishbone? Uh, no, not really. Like, uh, like Scott, you don't know Fishbone, huh? No, I don't think so, man. Oh, they were good. They were kind of a national band. How old are you, Vince? 43. 43, okay. Yeah. So you are, you would be about four, five, six, seven years older than me. Yeah. So you might have so, caught a caught the front end of some stuff that I didn't see back then. Right. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you you guys were like more, um, and Angela's what? 37. You're older than you? 37, yeah. Yeah. So there might have been like a little bit of a gap where I saw it coming where you were fully immersed in some of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. We we I really grew up a lot in the gangster rap era, man, when that stuff yeah. was just big, dude. You yeah. know, and some also some of that other stuff like the Bloodfish or whatever, the Bloodhound Gang and yeah. you know, some of them bands like that that came out that were, you know, I was a little bit I had some friends that were kind of a little bit more into that and into oh, the sure. skateboarding scene and all that stuff. So But yeah, we we grew up with that though with like I remember when NWA and Public Enemy came out and it was like, yeah, you know, punk rockers took on that stuff because they were saying the message just like punk rockers were, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. And like two live crew. I remember yeah. dubbing them tapes and selling them, you know, <laughs> recording them and selling them to yeah. kids that weren't allowed to have them. You know oh, what sure. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> People be like, can I come I over and like listen to some two live crew? <laughs> yeah. De La Soul. That sounds familiar. Yeah. De La Soul was great back in the day. De La Soul on a roll. <laughs> you still jam some of that old stuff when you're riding around now hell yeah i was just rocking out to some nwa with my 11 year old the other day oh i gangster rap it all the time dude depend i gangster rap and then go straight to country music <laughs> old old country music though yeah old it's got to be old for me i can't handle the new stuff yeah, yeah i liked it when they lived the life you know what i mean they actually lived what they were singing about yeah, like they weren't yeah. glamour boys you know what i mean like today it's like the country music singers are all glamour boys they're like yeah. oh yeah. make sure you got my makeup on before i fucking hit the stage and my sure, dudes like, were lucky to get dragged out the limousine because they was drunk right before they could hit the stage so we got to get george jones up or he's not going to make it to the show you know exactly <laughs> Yeah. Now they bedazzle their jeans. They bedazzle their damn. Oh, well, boy. you know what though? Some of them older country jeans, singers. John? No. Okay. Good. No, no, man. I, I. That's the first thing Angela, I look at. Is don't the, let them do that. But wait a minute. Hank talks about in <laughs> one song about a rhinestone cowboy. In what song is that? He oh. Talks about yeah, and he says he's not no rhinestone. Well, cowboy see, they were allowed to do like whatever that. the fuck they wanted, though. Yeah, well, that was uh, <laughs> that was Conway Twitty. I think. Uh, who was it? Like a rhinestone cowboy. Uh, that was a song. Yeah, yeah. like a rhinestone cowboy. Yeah, I yeah. know what you're talking that about. That was a, a '70s song. Uh, <laughs> Travis Tritt or something like that. One of those. No, old that's ones. that's '90s right there. Mm. Oh, is it? I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's so funny, like, you talked about your parents leaving for a few weeks. I actually grew up with some of my friends, my one dude, Jerome. Like, his mom would leave for, like, every weekend. She had a boyfriend that was in Columbus or something like that. And um, she would leave and buy three pounds of bologna. She would leave three pounds of bologna, two loaves of bread, and enough Kool-Aid to get us by the whole weekend. Wow. And, and we would rock out, we would play spades, play dominoes, all that stuff all weekend. Eating, some eating bologna food. sandwich like it's filet mignon, dude. I swear to God, we'd be walking around like we had something amazing, you know? Bologna <laughs> and, uh, sandwiches are cool. good. When you fry them up, you fry that bologna up and it gets nice and crispy on the edges. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I think we were using some of that Velveeta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the, with the cheese wheel slicer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah you know what growing up in chicago i i didn't grow up in the inner city of chicago i grew up right on the, the outskirts of the suburbs <clears throat> uh park ridge i don't know if you've been to chicago we've been one time and that was to yeah, bob marley it. festival oh, yeah nice that was probably downtown somewhere it was think. at the ymca like yard or whatever really? 
It was the weirdest thing ever, dude. It's like we went into the concert, and they're literally jamming, like, the whole band's going on. Bob Marley, you know, whatever, Peter Tosh, you know, all them up there. You know, not Bob Marley himself, but the you know, whole Sorry. cover band. His sons, all them are there, right? And to the left, there's a baseball game going on with Little League parents watching their kids play baseball. That was to the right, and so, then to the... And, and then to the other side... No, you're- no, you're right. Yeah, and then to the right-hand side, there yeah. was ghetto apartments with people drinking 40 ounces and looking down, you know, oh, and wow. pouring a little sip out for their homies and all that stuff. <laughs> and it was like, wow, this is pretty diverse. That was the best concert festival that we have ever been to. Everybody wow. was so nice, and everybody was just, there was like no riffraff, no... Nobody getting in trouble, nobody trying to hurt one another. Everybody was just there to enjoy the music and smoke a bunch yeah. of pot. And I got drunk and trying to like convert a jihadist taxi driver. <laughs> and uh, during the trip back, I said some stuff that really offended his religion. That was on the way there. Was it? Oh, wow. So I was already blasted on the way there. <laughs> and this was just last week, right? No. Oh, this was a long time ago. <laughs> they said he was really mad looking. I think I was up front with him too, wasn't no, I? No, my brother was up front and oh, you were sitting in the back right. with me. He's getting pissed, huh? Yeah, I have no idea what I said to him, but it was something. It was something bad. Get out of my car now. <laughs> I kill you now. <laughs> Suicide vest. <Yeah. laughs> Boom. <laughs> so, so you grew up in the burbs, huh? You weren't no cake uh, eater, burbs, were you? Yeah. Yeah, practically the burbs, but I uh, I spent all my teenage years uh, downtown, a, a place called uh, Belmont and Clark, which is Wrigleyville, close to uh, Wrigley Field. So you know, grew up a, I grew up a Cubs fan, Bears fan. That, when you're from Chicago, that's just kind of injected in your blood. Same mm-hmm. with you guys being you know close to Cleveland and stuff. You know, the real fans are are not in California. We got funny fans out here. They're from everywhere else. You know, because yeah. it's a big melting pot. But uh, yeah, it was practically the burbs. But I, I, I didn't. The only time I went to the burbs was when I was in school. You know, I went to a Catholic high school that was in the burbs, and I, I managed to, you know, skate through there. I think my cumulative GPA was like one point six five when I graduated. Mm-hmm. You know, and I wasn't destined for college. So I got to ask uh, you, Vince. You made it through a Catholic school. You didn't get anything up the boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, never. Because they wouldn't. They wouldn't uh, go after guys like me. That would, you know, I was too high strung. <laughs> right you know I mean? Nothing they up the boo boo. Nice. Dirty kids. <laughs> you weren't. Pre- you weren't pretty. Is that what it is? Like you weren't yeah. like a one of them pretty boys. Vince might have pulled out his yeah. steak knife that he's chasing people <laughs> around with and stabbed them in the nuts. Is what he's saying. Yeah. Cut, I was too outspoken. Their off. Yeah. <laughs> he got me in the boo boo. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. I forgive you. <laughs> I was an altar boy. I was an altar boy. I would steal the table wine after mass, you know, oh. fill up a little flask and out the door. Yeah, I always liked the <laughs> um, nice. the little pieces of bread that you could eat when you did um, communion. Yeah. Those things were yeah, so good. They were tasty. Yeah. We used to steal those, too, and we'd go back to school and, like, toast them up with a lighter. <laughs> you know, they're, they're even better, a little bit toasted. Because oh. <laughs> if you leave them long enough in your mouth, they'd melt in your mouth. They, I don't know. I yeah. thought they were always pretty good. Yeah, we we uh, being an altar boy and going to a Catholic school that was attached to the school, we would have to uh, go do funerals during the day of like someone died, and we're like, as altar boys, we're like, hell yeah, we'll go because a you get out of class, b you get paid for it by whoever died, you know, is putting on the funeral. They'll flip you like a fifty or something like that to do it. Weddings were freaking awesome because you usually made a hundred bucks off of it, and you get to steal the wine, you know, and. and You know, growing up in the Midwest and having shitty weather, you didn't go out for recess, you know, when it was snowing out, whatever. So you had to go to church and, you know, do your your duty. And and we would steal bags of of the host, you know, the the wafer things. And Mm -hmm. we'd go back to school and pass them out to people and make, you know, stupid things out of them. Pretty sacrilegious, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know it's not my greatest sin though you know back in the day some of my buddies stole their they worked at this factory that somehow they ended up with all these black dot cutouts like a little foam rubber black dot i bet i bet us pdr guys could use these things a day to put on the end of our knockdowns or something like that imagine just a, a an adhesive black dot them damn things ended up everywhere on our town, on everybody's cars, on every stop sign. And we started getting our hands on them, putting them in our bags. They ended up on every clock in school. Next thing you know, they had a, world, a whole town crisis looking for the black dot <laughs> bandit. 
<laughs> and good old Pickwa, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just everywhere you turn, there was a black dot, man. Like right. people, we'd be walking in wearing them on our shirts. You know what I mean? Like, who's doing it? <laughs> right, right. So, how did you end up going from Chicago and then ending out in California? Okay, well, uh, throughout my my, let's see, through through high school. You know, I, I wasn't destined for college. I, I spent one trimester at DeVry University, and I'm like, they threw calculus at me. I'm like, fuck that. I I, I barely even got past. What algebra. the hell are you even going to do with calculus, man? I, I don't know. So I got out of there, but I was always hands-on. I always took shit apart. I always put things together. I grew up in a very musical family, especially on the Irish side. Uh, my mom's one of 11 kids, so all of us learned or sang music. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was always good with my hands. And, uh, you know, after a couple of stints in rehab at, you know, 18, 19 years old, went for a little, uh, you know, excursion to get my life straightened out and uh, lived in a halfway house for about six months. Wow. And I, I was in the printing industry. So I, I would ran a press running, uh, you know, different flyers and stuff like that. Big stuff for like the Hyatt and things like that. And uh, one of my buddies that I met, he's like, he was working for dent wizard and i was 20 years old at the time and i was taking classes at the local community college for printing thinking this is my career you know I, this is what i'm choosing because i actually enjoy doing this and uh i said i saw the paychecks he was rolling in i'm like dude you need to get me a job there he's like oh, i don't know you're too young they don't hire anyone under 21 i'm like dude just get me an interview mm -hmm. so uh chicago is actually oh, at the time it was owned by corporate there was three markets that were uh, corporate dent wizard it was la chicago uh st louis and i think they might have had a piece in florida and he got me an interview with the the vice president which was terry kebby at the time i think he's back there now and uh i sat down with him and i bullshitted him and i told him hey dude i could do this and this and that and i convinced him you know i used my chicago ways my street smarts and, and just was you know dazzled them enough to uh say okay and then I got down to St. Louis and they're like, yeah, here's your, your monthly, uh, your, your monthly draw is going to be, uh, like $1,800, like $1,800. I can't, I can't live off of $1,800. Cause I actually left when I was 18, I moved out of my parents' house and I was on my own since I was 18 mm -hmm. and I knew I couldn't pay my bills with $1,800. And I had a girlfriend at the time and I'm like, you got to pay me $2,000 a month while I'm in training, you know? And, and we did, you know, and it was all good. And I went to training and uh, I almost got kicked out because I was a knucklehead there too. And I, I was the youngest technician at the time that they had ever hired at 20. And most of the guys that I was in school with maybe 30 other technicians. And these guys came from all over the country. And these guys, you know, they're, they're franchises that paid for them to be there, like $30,000. And these guys were fucking nuts they would go out drinking every single night and here i was the only kid that couldn't get into bars you know i was 20 years old so i just kind of sat back and focused on what i was supposed to do which was learning how to fix dents mm -hmm. nice and then so, from that point how did you go from there to long beach california okay well yeah uh i'd have to fast forward a little bit uh at the same time i was playing music in chicago and i was in several bands in chicago and uh I, I worked for Dent Wizard for two years, and then uh, we had a record contract offered to us with one of the studio bands that I was playing with in Chicago. And so we all moved out to California, and I said to Dent Wizard, I said, hey, listen, I'm moving to California. If you want to work for me, or want me to work for you when I'm out there, pay for my trip. They're like, okay. So they pay for my transfer, and I didn't have to do anything. And uh, the first two months, I, I lived in a hotel in Hermosa Beach, California, which was like, I'm 25 years old. It's epic. It's four to one ratio in this town. You know, four women to every one guy. I, I, and this is the experience, you know, 25 <laughs> years old. This is, this is an LA experience. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. So you got in habit of getting with four women at one time. <laughs> yeah. Getting it on. Well, I mean, you got to take your fair share, right? <laughs> I'm listening to you. <laughs> but, uh, well, the funny thing is I was in charge of Hertz and Budget at LAX, and we had a – if you've ever been to LAX, there's a ton of strip clubs around LAX. 
So where would we go for lunch? You know, we didn't go to McDonald's. We went to the strip clubs, which had buffets. Oh. So we were just, you know, snagging strippers left and right. And as soon as you tell them that you're a musician, they were all over you. Oh. <laughs> I can see you pulling the hairs out of your mouth from the chicken wings. Oh. Like, oh, Jesus, can you girls put your panties on when you're over here by the buffet? <laughs> oh goodness did anything ever yeah. jump out at you like <laughs> you know like a little yeah. bug or something or never caught no there like yeah. one lip case, gonorrhea uh, or anything gonorrhea yeah the clap they they were clapping like... a lot. <laughs> <laughs> did it smell in there i mean was it stinky it, uh come on well, girls it. dance for a little while you know well yeah because you start sweating in places you know yeah but it wasn't like fully nude it was it was topless. The places that uh, that it, I yeah, guess, but still, yeah, even if of... you have a like a bathing suit bottom on, you're gonna be sweating. You're gonna have yeah. boob sweat, under boob sweat. You're gonna be sure. sweating in another place. I so. hate it when that <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> we don't yeah. care about that shit. We don't. <laughs> Sweaty tits and chicken wings. <laughs> right. Who cares? Air conditioner dies and they're all sweating all over your food. And see, that's what I'm saying, Vince. She doesn't understand. Us men are fucking savage. Yes, uh, we're we're primal. We're like we don't care like Vikings and shit. Yeah, like my wife gets all upset. Oh, I need to take a shower. I bet you could smell me. I'm like, I hope I could smell you. Right? <laughs> yeah, we like the smell go. We don't like to be stinky. And then ah. we're like, ah, turn over. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I do have to share like a funny story. So when we were out in California and John was doing his training out there, we decided that we were going to take a road trip up the um, Pacific Coast Highway and go to Venice Beach. And we actually drove through a portion of Long Beach and we were at a, a stoplight. And I look over and there is a prostitute standing on the corner she was probably about i'm gonna say like five eight or five nine like and she had this orangey blonde hair short orangey blonde hair that was sticking straight out she had um vince probably knows her it was like in the upper 80s <laughs> <That's my neighbor. laughs> she had a um she had, she had a giant had, afro she had really? a fur coat a giant afro a long fur coat and it was like pinkish red <laughs> lipstick, and it was just smudged like all over the place. It was the most the prostitute place. looking prostitute I've ever seen. Yeah, like something right. that you would see out of a like here in Dayton weird movie. Here, I was just here in Dayton. You yeah. really don't see them because I think they try to blend in. You know, sure. Like this lady sure. wasn't doing no blending no. in, dude. She might as well have had a like pimp with out. a purple yeah. suit and shit behind her drinking like this a cup like during the day. During yeah, the daytime, during the day. right in Long Beach, wow. dude. I wonder if she was like setting up if she was like an undercover cop or something because i never see shit like that i, I don't i don't I know we drove through the, 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 the spot was kind of sketchy i was like lock the doors like it just i don't know i've never seen anything like that in my entire life <laughs> yeah up in the lbc homie <laughs> yeah that's, just uh, like, that's the west side <laughs> is a gangster over there oh yeah it's still gangster yeah it's it's still pretty gangster i'm on i'm on the east side which you drove probably right past my house in in a way. Well, it was like one part was like really bad, and then we drove, in, and then it wasn't. It didn't last that long, and then it just got really nice. And I was like, "Oh, thank you, Jesus." Well, it, it was as horny is that place you call Horny Corner? <laughs> horny Corner is that on the <laughs> west side? Oh, you do. No, that, that's uh, in Belmont Shore, Horny Corner. Yeah, look up YouTube videos on that. The horny Corner Fourth of July. It's pretty legit. What's Horny Corner? It, evidently, it's where horny people go. <laughs> oh, for real. <laughs> around here, they what around here is they meet like at a... rest stops. Oh, right. oh, one of them <laughs> places. The oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, is it a bar corner, or something? It, no, it's it's actually down in the bay. Uh, the way that it's set up, there's a bay to Long Beach where all the nice houses in Naples and stuff like that. Some celebrities live over there. Uh huh. And uh. So it's just a corner with the street that runs alongside it, Bayshore Avenue. And it comes to a corner and then you have to turn and they have to block it off because back in the day there used to, there's girls hanging out with G-strings on and no tops and you know laying down sunbathing and accidents would happen all the time because of, you know, people rubbernecking and looking well, at yeah. the ground, you know, slamming into cars all the time. So they called it Horny Corner because a lot of, you know, old men used to hang out there. Or they still do. Oh. Check out the pretty girls. 
because we're right next to Cal State Long Beach, the, the college. Oh, do they wear sweat? Do they wear sweatpants? I always hear yeah. that sweat. <laughs> <laughs> the old men wear sweatpants. Is that what you're asking? Alyssa, I've heard um, our the guy that tattoos us, Kevin. He's like, old men when they go to strip clubs, they wear sweatpants. Yeah, they don't want to be confined. <laughs> they, they need the, the the freedom of movement, right? That's not a bad idea. No, except for if you're pitching a tent, you're, everyone's going to know you're pitching a tent. Well, he said they want as much as like the feeling, I guess, when they're getting a lap dance. Oh, sure. Well, you can also tell everybody that your pants are pleated. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that reminds me of the uh, anchor man where Will Ferrell <laughs> is being yelled at by that lady who played, that girl played Kelly Bundy or whatever. She's just yelling at him. Oh, yeah. And he's on anchor man, and she looks down, and he's, <laughs> oh, my God. And he's got a giant heart on. A boner. And he just looks at her and says, my pants are pleated. <laughs> <laughs> Applegate. That's yeah, my, Christina my Applegate. wife's doppelganger. Ganger. She looks like Christina Applegate. <laughs> nice, nice. Let me ask you something, Vince. So going to yeah. that, dude, so how did you and your wifey meet? Oh, we met. Oh. How long has it the been? the real story or what did I tell, like, uh, you know, the people at the, the PTO meetings? Oh, no, the real story. We want story. the real deal, the real son. The story, yeah. The real story. Okay, well, coffee shops were really big in the 90s, right? They're still kind of big, but people actually used to talk to people at coffee shops. Now everyone's on their laptops and phones and shit like that, not paying attention to each other. So uh, there was this awesome uh, coffee shop. In fact, it's the same coffee shop that, uh, what's his face from Sublime used to play at? Bradley. Uh, Bradley. Singer. Bradley. Bradley used to just sit there and rock out and jam on on his guitar, and they gave him a mic, and no one paid attention to him. So uh, it's called uh, Portfolios. And so I saw her there. And at the time, I'd only been in California for maybe a couple months. And I made some friends and I was hanging out with them. And I saw her there. And then the next weekend, uh, this girl that I was dating that happened to be a stripper from L.A., she uh, she called me up. She's like, hey, do you want to go to the fetish ball up in L.A.? I'm like, really? Fetish ball? OK, uh, maybe it's an L.A. thing. Let's check it out. So we go there and there's guys walking around rubber suits with dildos up their butts and all sorts of weird stuff, right? Oh my. And it was really cool. You know, it, it, how could so you walk around guys. with a dildo up your butt? The, it was the strangest thing. They were like in latex suits, right? <laughs> and then the <laughs> girl had this cable coming out of their butt, like an air wedge, you know, in our industry, yeah. with a ball on it. And if he wasn't behaving himself or doing something, they would just like pump it up and he was like, <gasps> Oh, ouch, ouch. Right. But he couldn't talk because he was, you know, oh, in my. latex from head to toe. Oh, wow. So it was a really cool show. Like, they had guys with meat hooks in their back, and they were <gasps> slinging from across the stage on oh. rubber bands. Really cool stuff. And then upstairs, there was a, a dance club. So we went up there, and my buddy Steve comes running over. Hey, you got to meet these girls. You know, he was showing off that he was there with two hot girls, right? And uh, I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, and I'm with, with the stripper chick that was pretty smoking hot. And he brings her over. I'm like, oh, that's the girl from the coffee shop. So, oh. yeah. So I said hi, gave her a hug, introduced myself. And then uh, later on, I got her number from Steve and called her up. And the rest is history. Aww. Yeah, man. Hey. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Uh, going on 20 years now. Married 17. Mm -hmm. And she hasn't had you put on one of them rubber suits so far, <laughs> right? Well, just the bottom half. <laughs> I get claustrophobic. I can't have anything in my head. Because I, I didn't hear you yelp when you started talking about this. I figure she might have had the pump off camera here. <laughs> Don't, uh, hey, hey. I wish she was here. Ouch, 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 ouch. I would I'd bring her on, on the show, too. She's a, she's a funny lady. Yeah. Actually, you guys will meet her next week at the at the show. So, nice. Yeah. So what do you call it? The mega the media. The mega media event. Ooh. Yeah. Angela, you're coming, right? Of course. Nice. She doesn't want to stay out late, though. No, I don't want to stay out too late. Maybe yeah. just like one night. Okay, like Friday night. Friday night, okay? You see me raising my eyebrows Fr as Friday she says night. that? Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. I, I don't even night. argue Saturday with her anymore no, when she Saturday says this night. stuff because I know <laughs> that when she gets around people, the whole plan changes. <gasps> oh, Vince's wife's here. 
Oh my god, yeah. we totally gotta go somewhere. <laughs> well, she'll totally go anywhere, but she doesn't drink, so that's the bummer. Well, could be a bummer part. She she doesn't need to drink. She's still a nutcase. That's okay. That Tell her she's matter. driving the limo. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> Her and John could stay sober together. We'll get all fucked up. No, John drinks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. John's drinking again. Yeah. Yeah, just occasionally. Yeah, on yeah. the weekends. I can yeah. handle myself so far. I don't I don't let loose anymore. Unless it, there's an occasion to let loose. You so, know? But this would be an, an occasion because we would all Absolutely. be together. I yeah. cannot majorly let loose over this one. No. Well, maybe Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday. Because I'm not going to be teaching no, or doing Saturday. anything No, not Saturday. No, because we have to fly back on Sunday. We're I would rather flight. fly back with a hangover than be at the event with one. Yeah. Okay, you let loose Saturday night. I'll let loose Friday night. There we go. <laughs> okay. That way you can keep an eye on me, and then I'll keep an eye on you the next yeah, night. Yeah, just like you did last time, huh? No, yeah. I did. <laughs> let him drink 15 shots of tequila. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I can't believe we kept ordering them. Gene Fetty was about crushed. And the funny thing is, is because I had already been drinking like a bunch before he even got there. And um, I think that's what over did. Oh, <laughs> he was hilarious. We had such a good time, though, man. Was, it was psh, yeah. it was like fast and furious. Yep, that's how it was. But, sure. um, you know, it's about the quality of time you spend with somebody, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, I heard, according to the podcast from last week, uh, you left early. You made it through a couple songs. They made it to the end, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Had to take his ass home. You can check out my, on my Facebook page. You can see me passed out on my steps. Yeah, yeah. I took the picture. Lily was looking at him like, "What the fuck is wrong with you, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? Yeah. Why are you sleeping there? She gave me the third Get degree the next up. day. No, I took care of your ass. Who? No, Lily. Lily. Yeah, she was very upset with you. You know how dogs wow. can be. Very, very upset. Angela, did you have to hold uh, John's beard back while he was throwing up? No, he didn't throw up at all. I don't really throw up, oh. dude. No. Oh, okay. Well, I was just making the analogy how us men, we always have to hold our wives' hairs back. You know, we have to hold the hair back while you're throwing up so you don't get chunks in your hair. John's never hold my hair back. She no, won't let me go. Uh, she wouldn't let me go into the restroom. Oh, that's right. I lock myself in the bathroom. I'm just like, leave me alone. I try to like, uh, when I would throw up, I don't get myself like to that. She has. Place. No, I haven't gotten myself to that place in a long time. Uh, three months, four months. No, it's been longer than that, sir. <laughs> I try to go in there and throw up and act like nothing's going on. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing in there? I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm just gagging right now. Uh, well, that's usually on other nights. <laughs> John, uh, highly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weren't you oh talking Lord. about penis and uh, extenders too? There's something about. Oh you, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. To recap our last episode, we were talking yeah. about. Um, but but wait a minute, I got something really interesting. So like last week, I was watching The Real Housewives of Orange County, and they say like nowadays, Mike men, watches that. Men, they say nowadays men they are getting Botox injected into their balls, so that way they're not saggy; they're more like perky. Yeah, there was an article about that that I read. I, hmm. I didn't understand that. Who the hell's spending that much time looking at their balls? Well, I don't know. Maybe they just want them to be more perky instead of like you know sagging. I mean, you know, if you ever had to like, maybe they just feel like they're holding them back. You know, it's like a. Yeah. You know, a slapping thing. Well, isn't it when men get older, slapping. they tend to get bigger and saggier? I think old <laughs> men have, do have boobs. big, saggy balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, that's, that's just gravity. Like, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> jackass, right? Remember jackass when he he's pretending to be the old man? Uh, oh, yeah. Johnny Knoxville, and he's got his balls hanging out of the bottom of his shorts and stuff. Oh, oh right. We're not there yet. 43, the balls are still snug up to the body. Just so you know, John. Well, you may want to get some of them Botox injections just to slow down anything. Because, you know, at 43, we may be getting there, Vinny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still haven't had it. I don't know if I could take a, a ball injection, dude. It's like, like a really fine needle, though. Oh, I mean. good God <laughs> almighty. I don't care. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. That's real no. scary. Well, man. you never know. Yeah, Once and, you turn 50 or well, something, look at people you might who get like, their penis pierced and they get a rod straight through it dude there's just this one guy that i met when i first came out here he actually had boar's hairs and uh put through his penis 
Mm. And he was from Brazil or Argentina or something. He said the women love it because it's like a French tickler. But I, I'm like, I don't know. I think like, that would be like kind of pokey or something. I just don't think it'd be. But it's like they were they long. He didn't show me, but he said no. They drape over. They're not, you mm-hmm. know, pointy at the end. They're. You know. hmm. but boar's hair is like really coarse, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I just didn't get it. There's people that do a lot of weird shit, man. We were talking to one of the tattoo guys uh, at the tattoo shop that we go to, and he said that some guy came in and wanted the Red Bull logo tattooed on his nutsack. No. Oh. And they, they, they did it. I was like, did you do it? He's like, See, hell yeah, he man. He had 100 need, bucks. He would need Botox injections when he got older, so that way his tattoo still looked fine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, every time I he said Botox, that uh, the tattoo guy said they had an apprentice in there hold it <laughs> like one of the you know oh. one of the new guys like stretch it out and hold it yeah, for him stretch his skin yeah <laughs> i wonder if that hurt yeah i would say so i but... think it would i think it would burn it would burn severely mm. Even they'd, like, be, they'd remember... be plumped afterwards they'd yeah. be plumpy balls or your ball sack and they'd be plumpy yeah <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you do some research on that? You're you're all about getting lots of tattoos. Why don't you let us know? That could be your next one. No. The space on your nutsack. There you go. <laughs> well, I already have that. <laughs> have what? <laughs> what do you have? I he paid said attention. Angela's face on my nutsack, and I said I already have that. That's fucked up, John. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me come over there. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> be ramming something up your ass here in a minute. She's yeah. Thanks, uh, she will. That black, big black dildo with the air <laughs> hose on it. Pop that sucker up. <laughs> oh, good yeah. lord! I, if I'm walking funny tomorrow, you guys know what's up. It'd be sexual oh, sure. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be Dent Trainer live, kind of like stumbling around, you know. <laughs> then everybody will listen to this podcast and they'll know what's up. Oh. Definitely right. went left a little bit. <laughs> well, Vinny, I think that about wraps up our podcast, brother. <laughs> Sorry, Unless we got anything. <laughs> yeah. Unless you got anything else to tell us about your Vince D'Alessandro and your wild and crazy life? Not really. You know, I, I live a pretty uh, mild life now. I, I got all my fun out when I was younger, you know, and uh, I still let loose once in a while, but uh, I had to grow up sometime. I had to conform to society. Can I ask one so... more question, though? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so how did you get your first car? My first car? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like legitimately? Or... <laughs> <laughs> My first car was when I was... I think Mike edited this out of one of our podcasts one time, Vince. He probably did. I was 15 years old. I was probably... I was a sophomore in high school. And, I, of course, I was running with the wrong crowd. And this kid was driving around a 74 uh, Chevy Monte Carlo. And I go, dude, I want your car. He goes, okay, give me a sack of weed for it. I'm like, okay. So I ran out and bought, you know, an out or a a quarter of weed and gave it to him for the car. Wow. I drove around. Yeah. Uninsured, unlicensed. But how much did the bag of weed cost? Like 40 bucks. Damn. Hey, that was a pretty good deal, though. Yeah. And I don't... I didn't know if the car was stolen or not or whatever, but we drove it for about two or three months. Mm-hmm. And what we used to do, we used to go to the junkyard and steal the license plates off the junk cars that were Monte Carlos or Cutlasses and just switch them out because the tags were, you know, gone on them. Yeah. You know, it said they had expired. So we would find something that had, uh, <laughs> had current tags on it and steal the tags and put them on the car and drive the car around a little bit longer. And then I sold it to another guy for a bag of weed. And he ended up getting busted with it. <laughs> and he got like seriously busted because it turned out some of those cars, license plates that were in the trunk of the car that we threw in, they were from stolen vehicles. And like, oh. you guys are like a big ring of, you know, auto theft. They thought we were stealing cars and whatnot when we were just stealing plates off of junk cars in the junkyard, yeah. which turned out to be like a big thing with the junkyard stealing cars and junking them. Yeah. Mm, okay you know that's uh that's crazy dude because i remember growing up like i never had insurance like back in the day it seemed like like you nobody had insurance on their cars like not a young kids or whatever and uh, they didn't really enforce it until later on they really started <laughs> sending you random oh, letters of proof of insurance and shit like that oh shit oh yeah you know yeah. and uh yeah, they need to check that stuff yep that, i used to do a ton of credit card fraud when i was when i was younger and and really deep in my addiction and uh 
stuff we were doing you'd never get away with today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say too much about that, Vinny. Yeah, I'll <laughs> warn you on that one, man. But uh, believe it or not, me and her first met, she was, or actually not when we first met, but when she was pregnant, she took my car and backed into some dude in a Taco Bell parking lot. That because you had that one damn dog you got at a humane society. It's always our fault, guys. A you hear full that? Full grown oh, dog. Man. We were supposed to go and get a little puppy, and you get a dog that's like full grown full dog. Grown dog. <laughs> and that dog loved you, and it hated me. Yeah, but anyhow, in your view and you she backed into it. Yeah, yeah. So she backs was. into this guy's truck, and I get out, and I'm like, "Hey, man, I just let you know I don't have any insurance." And uh, it's so funny. My brother's a body man, so he followed us out to my brother's house, hooked him up with my brother, gave my brother some beer bunch of beer uh hooked up painted the guy's car and since then he's been a repeat customer because yeah, they're get out of here. yeah takes it back to my brother every time he needs something done he takes it over to my brother's man i was like seven months pregnant too and i was crying and they probably felt horrible i'm and like you John's can call the like cops but we're on private ass, property yeah, and john and was like piss ass drunk i was drunk yeah. and uh <laughs> so yep just follow me over there brother hooked it up fixed his car and you know yeah. made him a lifelong customer that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. This is pretty awesome. You're awesome. our first male guest. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't know how entertaining I am. I, I you know, I don't have boobies to, you know. <laughs> boobies? Know Nobody look at looks is. at boobies. They just listen well, to this uh, podcast. From what you've told all of us, you do have perky nuts. <laughs> Right, yeah, I do. <laughs> Gravity has not kicked in yet. No need for Botox, so maybe like some of the guys will like, you know, perky nuts, boobies, like you know, guys will never know the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're both round, you know. It's yeah, like... next time somebody sees you, they'll be like, Vince, you're the one with the perky balls. You got perky balls. If you guys see Vince at uh, the Mobile Tech Expo, just make sure you give him a squeeze. Yeah, they're firm. <laughs> and they're real. Have you seen those nudicles for guys that like uh, have one nut or born with one nut or have an accident and get their nuts cut off or whatever? They mm-hmm. have nudicles for dogs. Yeah. They have nudicles, they have nudicles for, for guys now, too. Like, if you want to. Oh. You know, swap out and get a bigger nut. Nice. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. I don't see why somebody would, would want them to be too big, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody might be into big nuts. I mean, That's true. We're talking fetishes here earlier. Y- yeah. Yes. You know, a big ball fetish. That's... Well, maybe the same guys that drive around with the, the nuts hanging off the back of their trucks, their pickup trucks. You know, big brass nuts or big black ones. You ever see those? Yeah. yeah. We love yeah, them here in Ohio. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I was gonna put yeah. some on my truck, but I couldn't find any so far. So I've been checking all big enough. Been checking right? all the truck stops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll keep a lookout for you, John. I'll yeah. see what I can do. I got on this phase, Vince, where I started buying all truck stop t shirts, like eagles flying over semi trucks that Wolves. are being chased down with Wolfs and Harley Davidsons yeah. with like yeah. American flags blazing in the background. Mm-hmm. I'm like, boy, that ro- that's America right there, son. That America. rocks. Yeah. And cowboy hats, too. Cowboy hats, oh. baby. You went on a kick and with cowboy hats. Shot glasses hats. for the wifey. You know, each, <laughs> each one, you know. Each, <laughs> yeah. Each, each shot glasses. I literally, the Cavaliers won their game in Cleveland while I was wearing a Larry the Cable Guy cut-off flannel shirt. <laughs> like, in the middle of the game, I'm like, I'm putting on my lucky shirt. And, like, yeah. pulled off my one shirt and put on this cut-off flannel shirt with, like, cut-off sleeves. That you got at the truck stop. That I got at the truck stop. On our way to Cleveland. And it came with cut-off sleeves. Like, I didn't even cut them off. It came yeah. that way. Oh, really? Yeah. All frayed and everything? Yeah, yeah. all frayed and everything, nice. dude. And uh, I wore that as the Cleveland during the Cavaliers half. during the second half. And that's when we came back, man. Yep, wow. we won that shit. Yep, yeah, that year, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, well, I don't know if they're going to do it this year. Don't say that. Yeah. I'll keep... I wish you luck. Yeah. We will. I'm not, I'm not too terribly big into basketball, but I do I do enjoy it. He just enjoys it when he gets down to the grind with me and somebody on the West Coast. Yeah. That's when you enjoy shit. it. The banter's <laughs> always the best part. You know, back and forth. It makes it more exciting. Yeah, man. All right, Vince. Did you see what my neighbors did? They're Dodgers fans, right? And I'm Cubs fans, and I fly my W out out in front of my my house. And uh, in the middle of the night, they came down and they put their Dodgers floor mat on my my doorstep. So when I woke up this morning or the, the other morning, I opened up my door, my front door, and there's this big Dodgers friggin' floor mat, bath mat, sitting on the whole thing covering my my 
my doorstep. Did you pee on it? Uh, no, I took my dog <laughs> and made sure. You know how dogs like rub their like their scoot. The yeah. yeah the scoot. I said, all right, scoot, scoot, scoot. Yeah. I rolled it up and gave it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make it too obvious, right? Yeah. That's war, though, man. You need to toilet paper their whole house or something like that and spray paint cubs on the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're losing right now, so I can't do anything. I got to be cool. But uh, we did go on the back of their cars and in dirt, you know, wrote Cubs, LA sucks, it was big LA with the cross through it. And they're Mexican American guys that, and girls that, uh, you know, total Dodgers fans, total Dodgers fans. So they, they didn't even notice until the end of the day. Do you say they're Mexicans? Yeah. Yeah. Still steal their grill. <laughs> oh, there's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be pissed, dude. <laughs> All the Mexican folks I know love that grill, dude. They're always out grilling out. Are they grilling out a lot? They do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Still, is it on their front porch or on their back porch? Front porch? Back. Oh, yeah. dang. They were close right there, man. That's yeah. I'll, I'll keep that one in mind, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big dog. Hey, man. Well, anyhow, we appreciate you having you on the podcast. Going to go ahead and end this one. Yeah, so, I appreciate you guys, too, and everything you do. Yeah, my man. Aww, yeah, my man. Thank you. Honey, what do you say? Well, it's all about the hustle. All right, y'all. We'll see you on that next one. Whoop, whoop.